that I'm hopelessly optimistic. Um, and as I said before, um, if you don't ask the questions, uh, you will not get answers. So uh, the very simple question I came up uh, or I come up with uh, for this evening, uh, I'm looking for money like so many other people, <laughs> but uh, the money may also very well come with partners who bring also knowledge and uh, see how we can reach what we're talking about tonight uh, by going this uh, walk together. I definitely agree with what you said, uh, Charlotte, about walking your talk and uh, integrity and uh, not doing things alone and adapting and with humor, etc. And uh, I get this feedback often from the people I'm working with. Uh, they say like, yeah, I, I, Uli tells me things that are not nice, but then she's smiling at me and she loves me. <laughs> <laughs> I just can't help it. I have to do that. So, uh, um, yeah. Um, so let me tell you what it is that uh, uh, I'm trying to do. Uh, I've been in Egypt now for, for uh, 13 years. Um, I got here because I happened to meet an Egyptian. I got married to him, um, so that's why I'm in Cairo. Um, about uh, five years, four years ago, um, I started feeling and being more outspoken about it. That there is a need for some space where you can meet other people, where you can work together in diversity, where you find temporary workspace when you are an entrepreneur setting up your own business. Um, but I didn't like, or I didn't feel comfortable in a space like these five-star places, hotels, uh, lounges of hotels, etc., where you always have to go like very neatly dressed and everything, and everybody is like, oh, I'm so important, and uh, this, this thing about minimizing the ego, <laughs> we're in it for the greater good, I think. We have an earth to take care for. Uh, we need uh, some really, really innovative solutions to make sure that we can survive on this world. Um, so taking all these things together with the need of uh, having a small daughter that I was taking along with me all the time and I didn't want to leave her in one nursery in this place and then uh, go to work somewhere else. Um, I felt that what we really needed in Cairo was a place in my neighborhood in Heliopolis where there's a space for children, uh, there's also a space to work, there's a space to meet. So I started talking about this um, when I went to a meeting of a, of a network called Pioneers of Change. So like uh, uh, trying to make this world a better place, a network of people who met in university who decided to, uh, we, we need something else, we need to continue when we're now supposed to be grown up. We want to stick together and uh, we, we don't look for solutions alone, we need to do it with others and we don't wait until tomorrow until we have the perfect solution, we just start trying to implement it. Uh, at this meeting in Canada, somewhere in the woods, in a learning place, uh, a learning this, um, space called the Shire, which is nothing more than 160 acres of uh, reforested uh, wood. Um, we were sitting there and I talked about it to people and said, oh, I want to have this. And they got like, oh, we have this in London. It's called the hub. Uh, why don't you join us? Why don't you try to set up a hub in Egypt? I said, okay, cool idea. So I started talking about this to people uh, in Cairo. And then I found somebody. Uh, she said, look, I have here something that I wrote. And we put our uh, papers next to each other. Mm -hmm. And we said, well, it, it actually, it looks, it's, it's similar. It's uh, more or less the same idea. I said, OK, cool, let's work together. They had just set up a nursery and needed somebody to run the nursery. I said, OK, I can do this. Managing a nursery is not much different from managing something else. I'm not talking about the educational uh, content, but it's a, a business like everything else. So I can try that if I can also do my other little thing on the side trying to get this hub off the ground. Uh, so this was in uh, November 2006 when I started working in something that's called Bazibi. It's in uh, Heliopolis. And uh, since then it has grown, developed into a, a daycare for children from uh, three months up to five years. Uh, we work according, or try to work, <laughs> I've heard a phrase it like this because it's a constant struggle. We work according to something which is called the, uh, the Reggio approach. It uh, comes from Italy. Uh, the, the essence is of really trying to, to educate <coughs> children, support them in their learning for life, how to express themselves, learn to speak in many, many languages. They call it the 100 languages of a child. Uh, different networking connections throughout the world have brought Jennifer to us, who actually knows someone who is half Egyptian German in Munich, who is trying to set up a daycare, who in ex uh, again is a friend of somebody who I met to know through Mohammed al so who talk, 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 it came a long way. And when she asked this person in Munich, uh, oh, I want to go to, to Egypt somewhere or to an Arabic speaking country, she said, like, oh, you should call Uli, maybe you can come to Basini, and uh, here she is. Um, 
On the other side, uh, we have a, a space that we use uh, also in Minneapolis for setting up our, our co-working space. It's a small apartment. Um, if anybody needs a workspace, uh, it's there. It can be used. Uh, we, we try to charge a small fee only, but it's like in a rather informal setting, but it's available. Um, at the moment, the point is that uh, my partners who set up the nursery before, they want to sell. Uh, because they don't think that we are successful after three years. We, we, we kind of broke even last year. Um, then came the swine flu, <laughs> not many children. So we've been struggling, we've been surviving. They want to sell, they are asking for 200,000 Egyptian pounds. I have to pay 80,000 pounds by the 1st of September, the rest in uh, installments. So to continue, I need about 200,000 200, Egyptian pounds. Uh, I have a tiny part of it for now, but uh, I'm looking for solutions how to how to solve this. Um, the part about the hub, what I'm really looking for, if anybody has that, av that available, uh, a small or a bigger building in Heliopolis with an outside space where we could actually integrate the two things, the daycare together with the shared workspace and meeting spaces, etc. So um, this is where we're working toward that. Uh, the hubs by now exist uh, around the world in different places. There's a couple of them in North America. There's one in Los Angeles starting up, San Francisco, Atlanta, um, Halifax has one, Toronto has the Center for Social Innovation. Um, London has several ones, um, I think uh, Birmingham there's one. Um, in, in Germany, in Belgium, all over South Africa, Bombay, so it's spreading. And all of these hubs have one thing in common, that it's not just about bringing any kind of people together, but it's about looking for people who really want to work in a sustainable way, who walk the talk, who are talking about social innovation, who want to work as social entrepreneurs. We are not in there for the profit only. The things need to be run in a way that they cover the costs. This is uh, very important. Um, but money is not the only thing. Thank you. <laughs> if you want to include this in the discussion and. Uh, Yes, I would Maybe say, and if you want to read up on the idea of the hubs, there's a website, this is called the, the hub.net, and uh, our little website is buzzyb.net. <coughs> um, yes. You have to show profit. Yes, <laughs> I would love to. <laughs> I don't feel like running the daycare and paying for other people's children. I really don't feel like yeah, this. But, it. <laughs> but it's really like a long term and we are now in the fourth year. Uh, this is what I'm trying to explain to other partners that uh, uh, we're almost there. Yes, yes. so uh, um, well, we're discussing that, so uh, I'm working on it. And uh, uh, maybe one little side information, the single biggest investor in the hub on a global level is the widow of uh, the Anita Rodic, the founder of the Bob Shop. And uh, it has a strong connection to the UK, but uh, uh, we are also trying to uh, spread out all around the world. What is that last group? What is the name? Uh, sorry? The, the one that has a strong connection in the UK? Uh, the, the hub itself, it started in London, in Islington. This was the first one. And uh, the person who's like the single, the single biggest investor as a person is uh, uh, Mr. Roddick, the widow of, of uh, Anita Roddick of the Body Shop. Uh, he was the one who really thought that this is a good idea. And uh, um, we're facing big issues also on a global level at the moment because it's trying to combine so many different countries and cultures and everything and, and fiscal systems and whatsoever. <laughs> so it's a big struggle. But uh, on the global level, I think we are through it and we are, we are going to